Africa is overflowed with a myriad of one of the most ancient cultural customs and religious beliefs which are still found nowadays across the five geographical points of the continent. In West Africa, among the Yoruba people of southwestern Nigeria, there's a pantheon of deities known as the Orishas, a group of gods highly revered in the religion of its people. And among them, there's a divinity who once crossed path with the living as a mortal man, but after his death became immortalized as the powerful Orisha of storms and thunder. But before we proceed on the story, it's important to understand that Yoruba divinities are sometimes considered as primordial spirits, or as deified ancestors linked with ethnic groups of people as well as the natural world. In some cases, they are perceived as heroic individuals who made important contributions to the life of the people, and were chosen by the supreme gods to be transformed into Orishas. Some of these revered deities often become patrons of occupational and professional guilds existing within the society. Now let's go back to the story. The god Shango is viewed as the most powerful and feared deity of the Orisha pantheon. He is the divinity heavily associated with lightning and thunder in the Yoruba mythology. Many accounts relate Shango of being closely related with the equilibrium of natural elements, as the tumultuous weather often caused by him are believed to be both devastating and cleansing. According to the myth, Shango could create thunder and lightning by throwing celestial stones down on earth. And wherever lightning was believed to have struck, the Shango priesthood would search the surrounding area to retrieve them, as the Yoruba believed that these thunderstones were imbued with special energy, and they would enshrine them in temples for rituals honoring the god. The depiction of Shango is typically that of a tall man, an imposing dark-skinned individual wearing a brass crown on his head. He holds a double-sided axe similar to a labris which chiefly symbolizes the thunderbolt, a prominent illustration of his power. He is the Orisha personifying virility and manhood as represented by the ram, his sacred animal whose bellowing resembles the loud rumbling sound of thunder. In popular legends, Shango had human origins in the trait of an impetuous warrior, who later became an arrogant ruler of the ancestral Yoruba kingdom of Oyo as its fourth Alafin, which much later became a city-state of some importance in the region. His reign which lasted for about seven years was marked by continuous campaigns and exceptional battles. Shango brought prosperity to the Oyo Empire, and was finally raised to the status of a divinity after his death. But other versions of the Shango legend paint him as a darker figure. According to some traditions, the legendary Shango was a tyrannical ruler who abandoned his kingdom and became a powerful Orisha who had to express his godliness through lightning and thunder. While in other stories, he was versed in magic and instilled great fear in his subjects, and whenever the Yoruba Orisha spoke, fire and smoke would burst forth from his mouth. But regardless of his many stories, devotees revere Shango for his sense of justice and his hatred for sorcery. The god communicated with his priests and followers by means of spiritual possession, as his spirit would often mount a human spokesperson just like a person could mount a horse. The person would lose consciousness, and the Orisha would then speak through his mouth and subsequently performing superhuman acts without hurting the body he had possessed. The most popular story about Shango is probably the one revolving around the circumstances of his transformation into an Orisha. It's believed that he discovered a charm that enabled him to call down lightning and thunder from heavens, but he unintentionally destroyed his own palace which killed most of his relatives in the process and somehow ended his own reign. He was so horrified and devastated by his loss that he hanged himself from a tree out of grief and shame. In another version of the myth, Shango was driven out by one of his war chief following a contest. 
The story tells how under the advice of one of his wives, Shango tried to get rid of two of his most powerful generals by having them fight each other to death, as they were viewed as threats for the stability of the kingdom. However, one of the warriors known as Gebanka warned Shango that if he was to come out victorious, the challenge would be between Shango and him, and one of them would have to leave the empire forever. Gebanka felled the opponent he was facing, and cut off his head which he threw contemptuously on the king's lap. Enraged by this gesture, Shango condemned the warrior to death by fire, but this could not kill the powerful sorcerer who mysteriously appeared unharmed after three days, and told Shango to vacate the throne for his infidelity and to never return. Now seen as a failure by his people, Shango was so embarrassed that he left the kingdom and killed himself by hanging. It is said that during the huge storm that fell on Oyo after his death, the voice of Shango came from the sky declaring that he had not died, but had returned to his place in heavens where he belongs. He would continue to keep watching over the Oyo kingdom and punish those who spoke against him by striking them with lightning. Although in both stories, Shango somehow fled from the kingdom full of shame and hung himself, many found this succession of events contradictory and even disrespectful for someone as powerful as King Shango to have committed suicide. Those accounts instead believe that he didn't go through such a shameful death, but was peacefully raised by the gods who recognized his value and wanted him up in heavens so that he can be praised even more. The cult of the Orisha may have founded the worship of Jakuta, a deity who hated immorality and would hurl stones of fire at those who ignored the will of the creator god. Shango is therefore regarded as a god of justice who brings severe punishments upon thieves and liars. He is significantly worshipped on the fifth day of the week using red clothing, just as he have admired red attire during his time with the living. Music instruments like drums are equally used during the ceremony of Shango, because the loud sound produced is perceived to be as similar as that of thunder, and which associate the Orisha with dance and other forms of musical entertainment. As the United States witnessed interactions between enslaved people of different tribal affiliations, the veneration of Shango eventually spread throughout the religion of the African diaspora existing now in the Caribbean and Americas. In the Cuban society, the Yoruba divinity is revered as Chongo, the most feared Orisha in Santeria, and as Zango in the Candomblé pantheon where he is known as the deity who took on strong importance among slaves in Brazil for his qualities of strength, his resistance and his aggression. Genealogically speaking, Shango is a royal ancestor of the Yoruba people, as he was the fourth king of the Oyo Empire prior to his posthumous deification. The Orisha is known for his powerful acts which made him a formidable warrior in battle, and he is probably the most recognizable male deity among the Orisha pantheon, as well as to be one of the most powerful ruler that Yorubaland has ever produced. If you've enjoyed the video make sure to leave a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more of Yoruba mythology. And in case you have anything you would like to share or discuss, you are welcome to do so in the comments below. And as always, stay curious.